broadcast with Amanda, Shandy, and Colleen. My name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Shandy. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is season five, episode three, episode number 183. We are live on Zoom tonight for our, as promised, our toga party. I have to say, looking at everybody's toga is amazing. Um, It's pretty great. (laughs) uh, Joining us right now, uh, we have, in order on my screen, uh, Judy, JP, Kayla, Roe, Dennis, Randy, uh, Gott, Tasia, Matt, Daniel. Um, We're also uh, streaming this on YouTube for anybody that did not want to join us via Zoom. Um, But yeah, here we are, (laughs) ready for more fun. Did everybody have a good week off last week? Oh my God, yes. Yeah, some of us had a better week than others. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. It was pretty Um, great. Okay, well, why don't you tell us about it? Um, Well, so we went to Alaska National Park, which is just north of here, a few hours, Um, but we had never been there before, and it was just so beautiful. Um, We didn't have any, like, reservations or anything, but we just, just, like, went up. Um, found a, a campground and then like we would just hop onto the first come first serves and just found a way to make it work for the the whole trip. Um, and we ended up staying like right in the park, um, right on Summit Lake. So that was our shower for most of the past week. Um, just beautiful mountain lakes. It was just so gorgeous. We did a lot of hiking. It's um, it's the the Lassen Volcanic National Park. So there are like multiple volcanoes. It was kind of wild because there's like a little bit of the um, activity that you see like in Yellowstone, but at a much smaller scale. But um, but it was cool to see because uh, I didn't realize that that existed in Northern California. So that was fun. We saw like the mini, mini Yellowstone. Um, but what was really cool is we uh, hiked a, a couple of volcanoes and got to like go inside this um cinder cone one which is a type apparently i learned a thing or two about volcanoes on this trip so there are four different types of volcanoes in lassen and one is a cinder cone and so the cinder cone called cinder cone you can go up to the top of it and then walk around and then actually go down inside it's oh, wow. super oh, that's wild cool. but like that the last part to like actually go up i think that's the steepest hike I've ever like the steepest incline I've ever done on a hike and you're walking in this like gravelly rock that's like this volcanic rock so you're you're kind of like not only is it super steep like this is not an exaggeration it's like this steep and then you're also kind of like falling back a little bit because of the gravel that you're walking through but super worth it then you get to the top and get to like look around and then when you go down you can basically like run like you don't fall because it's not like sand it's, mm-hmm. like, big enough that it, like, holds you, but you can just go flying down. Anyway, it was super, super fun. We did some amazing hikes, saw a bunch of lakes, just got out of town for a while, which was so nice. A little change of scenery. It was so warm. But we were, like, our campground was at 7,000 feet. So we were, like, you know, in a very different environment. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it was just, <laughs> it was so beautiful. And it's, you know, anytime I do something like that, it's, like, You know, like, I don't want to complain because I live right next to the ocean and it is beautiful and I've really come to appreciate it and it will always be beautiful. But like what speaks to my heart is like the mountains and pine forests. And it was just, it was great. So that was really, really nice. Uh, And then, and then we got back a couple of days ago and now I'm back to work. So, yeah, but it was really like rejuvenating. Like I, I needed that. Um, and it was one of those vacations, like all, all things said and done, we didn't leave until Tuesday. So I think we were gone for like five nights maybe. Um, but it like felt like much longer in, in like a good way. So it was good. Nice. That sounds awesome. awesome. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. Really Amanda, how, how was your birthday? It was good. It was really good. Um, we did not leave town. Uh, <laughs> there were not, you know, not a ton of trees, but a lot of fun nonetheless. Daniel and I, who we share the same birthday, yet it's a thing. Uh, we were going to have a little get together on Saturday in Prospect Park because, you know, we had a couple of friends coming from Manhattan and the way sort of public 
transit is right now, we figured a Saturday would be easier for people to get to Brooklyn than a Sunday. So that was our original plan. But the weather here in New York has been just pretty all over the place the past week. There's been lots of like pop-up thunderstorms and um, there was a tropical storm. There's just been all sorts of crazy stuff. And uh, the weather was looking really bad for Saturday. So we decided to cancel because we don't want, you know, we don't want people to come all the way out to have it like suddenly rain and it looked like it was really going to rain. Right. Cut to it was gorgeous all day on Saturday. And I think oh, we got no. a little rain at like seven o'clock at night. And it was like, well, that could have been, a, we could have done that a little different. But it ended up working out because a small, because then our plan was to just like go to the beach, just the two of us on Sunday. And it worked out that a, a couple of people, um, were able to to join us and they had cars. And so we were like, great, great. So the plan was to go to the Rockaways. Okay. And we, we figured, you know, we're driving. Uh, there's like, there's a national park out there that's got like a big, huge parking lot. And we figured that should be a good idea. But we, we essentially just did the whole thing wrong. We left too late there was too much traffic. We kind of forgot that the beaches like just opened up on the first. So it was chaos. We couldn't find a parking spot. Long story short, we decided that like this is just not going to happen and we should bail. Um, so instead, we ended up at Floyd Bennett Fields, which is also a national park. Interesting fact. It used to be an old like air hangar um, that they've now kind of made into a bunch of different things, but they do have a bit of a little bit of a tiny beach where people kind of fish. So we ended up kind of going there. And if you walked down to the end of it at low tide, there was like kind of this little secluded corner of beach that we could like be at kind of by ourselves. So it's like all's well and ends well. Uh, And just like a good, a good birthday reminder to just to be okay when the plan changes and to just kind of trust that things will work out the way they're supposed to work out. And it's like not the journey you thought you were going on. But a lot of times the little detour can be a lot of fun. So it ended up being a great day. Um, and yeah. if, I can, if I can butt in. Yeah, oh, please butt yes. in. It was kind of one of those things. Who unmuted where this guy? Like, I'm like, oh, that's yeah. right. He's here too. <laughs> <laughs> Happy um, birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was. It ended up probably working out for the best because, you know, if we had found a parking space and gone to that really crowded beach, it would have been, we would have been surrounded by people. It would not have oh, been, yeah. Yeah, it super been safe, city. really, probably. And we ended up like at this very secluded area. Uh, oh. It was a really popular beach day, but we were, we found this really secluded. Like, I've never, Amanda, have you ever been so secluded on a beach in New York before? Like, there's no way. Like, no. Yeah, so it worked out. It was good. Nice. It did. It did. Yeah. Awesome. And then we uh, we took yesterday off to do chores and stuff, but we took a bike ride um, nice. down to Brighton Beach, and uh, I almost crashed my bike. So <laughs> that was great. But you didn't. I didn't. I kind of tore up the back of my leg a little bit, but I feel like now I'm a real New York City biker because yeah. I almost crashed and – didn't <laughs> battle wounds we all have battle yeah. wounds it's i got scars wounds. from my elbow yeah yeah nice. so it's, it was it was an eventful couple of days and i got these oh. really gorgeous earrings <laughs> they it's, look so good on you yes like i knew uh, they would yes a uh, one uh, shandy pants uh sent me this wonderful birthday surprise in the mail earlier this week and i love them to bits and it was such a pleasant surprise. I'm so glad you like them. Yeah, I do. I love them. Yay. Thank you. Yay, yay. Hashtag yay. wearing carry. Shout out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone goes to wearingcarry.com, it will redirect to her website. I think that's the most brilliant thing ever. That is really smart. Yeah. I haven't that had is. a chance to check out her website yet. Just more out of fear that I will buy everything. And <laughs> she has really beautiful pieces. And uh, you can also follow her on Instagram. Sometimes she has really good like grab bag deals. But, yeah. Nice. Cool. If you want, I can put the website in the Twitter feed. Yes. And uh, not in the Twitter feed. I'm sorry. In the um in the show notes. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Wearing Carrie. Very good. Yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> um, and since we started, Scott Eric has joined us also with a toga, and nice. it looks phenomenal. 
So I think yeah. before we go, we need to get one more group toga picture. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, I'm glad that everybody, you guys had good weeks. I don't know. My week was very, it was not that as interesting. I watched Hamilton like 400 times. Um, Dude, I, serious, I seriously did. Also, uh, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, oh, oh, I watched um, Unsolved Mysteries and The Babysitter's Club. And uh, oh. both were awesome. Um nice. Nice. Both were awesome. I totally recommend it. Um, I think we should talk about the Babysitter's Club, but uh, I don't know. Like as a book reader, you guys have all been to my house and all seen the pictures of. I mean, all seen my books. And I was looking through some boxes last night because I actually did a babysitter's like arts and craft kind of thing when I was a kid. Like I don't know if you guys remember anybody out there listening. Um, they did the like sleepaway camp uh, chain letter thing, and there was like this book of the chain letters they gave to each other. Well, I recreated my own chain letter that I made out of construction paper and like painstakingly tried to like imitate their handwritings and everything. And my mom said she gave it to me, so I was looking everywhere last night, and I didn't find it, but I did find. A whole bunch of the babysitter's little sister books that were my sister Caitlin's that I'm pretty sure she wanted hers. So I'm pretty sure that maybe they weren't supposed to end up with me. But whatever. I'm not giving them back. And (laughs) anyway, so that was the highlight of my my week was was Babysitter's Club. Also, I did my first tunnel cash. Which means like I went in the sewer that was underground, like, you know, where like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live kind of sewers. So that was exciting. There was an elevation change at one point and you had to like swing from a rope to get from like to the ladder to get to like the thing higher up. And I like freaked out. I was like literally like trembling. I couldn't do it. So this this woman Katie had invited me to go and her husband and this other dude were both in the military. So they built a harness that I could sit in and then like heave toed and lifted me up. <laughs> and then after oh I was God. like, I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. But like, I really couldn't have done that. But it was really cool. So that's I don't awesome. Know. It was really awesome. It was so gross and dirty and disgusting, but it was really cool at the same time. Nice. Um, nice. So, yeah. I actually uh, froze. So last I heard, we were talking about Babysitter's Club. <laughs> I wonder when I moved came, spots. And then <laughs> I came, came back, back and Colleen's talking about being dragged in a makeshift uh, <laughs> seat by like ex-Marines. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I wonder how we got from A to B. <laughs> <laughs> this could be a fun game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was super fun. It was super fun. Um and then I also have a – like, because you guys are talking about the earrings, and this reminded me. I remember I was going to get the bookshelf a while ago, mm-hmm. and yes. the guy never, never like, got back – like, I, he said, don't worry about, like, the deposit or whatever, because, like, I know you're good for it. And then, like, a month went by and nothing happened, and I messaged him several times, and finally I was like, I don't care if you're not going to do it, but, like, I want to find somebody else to make it or get it someplace else. And he finally answered me and said that he had been in Florida because his mom died in a car accident. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Like, get back to me whenever you're ready, you know, whatever. I'll look around. So I was... I had been looking around for a while and I still couldn't find anybody local to do it and I couldn't find it on like Wayfair. So I went to his page yesterday. I was like, I wonder if he's back and like making things again. And I saw that he had made something and he had posted it like over the weekend. I was like, oh, maybe he's taking orders again. And then I was looking at the picture of what he made and I saw that his mother was alive and commenting on it. And I know this because... It was a woman with his last name, and I like ho- oh, no, hovered no. over the picture, like, and it was loves you and thinks you're so good at making <laughs> well, furniture. Yeah, so I went down the rabbit hole, and like anything on social media, everything is verifiable. It, my coworkers were like, "Well, maybe it was his stepmother or something," and I was like, "His wedding picture was her profile picture. That's not like a stepmother. <laughs> I mean, maybe it is, but." I didn't get the impression because then I went to his personal profile page, not his business one, and he had listed her as his mother in it. So I was like, "Well, fuck this dude! I'm not going to, not going to go beg he for it." He pulled a dead grandma. I know. Oh, not like, yeah, I know. Doing? So anyway, Forget I found bad business. That's just like being bad at being a human. I know. Just say <laughs> I'm overwhelmed and I can't do it. So anyway, totally. yeah. 
the, I have a happy out, happy outcome of this story. I looked okay. around and I found a shop that's an hour and a half away from here, but uh, it's a woman that owns it and she does all the carpentry and she's going to yeah, make my nice. bookshelf. Nice. Even better. Oh Even sometimes. better. So it's just like really you were saying, Amanda. That. Yeah. Sometimes the detour is more fun. And you end up with a woman-owned business. So yeah. there you go. A exactly. lady-made bookshelf. Nice. <laughs> a lady-made bookshelf. <laughs> oh, well, I'm excited because, like, and even when I was, like, describing it to her, she, like, at, like just kind of knew what I was talking about. So I was like, yay, please don't suck. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't lie about people in your family dying so that <laughs> <laughs> to cover for the fact that you were too busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So anyway, yeah, good times. So I'm excited about that and hope. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, before we move on, we have one, I guess, quick announcement. Broad topics thing. Uh, we're going to start that next Monday night at 9.15 over Zoom. Um, and that will be, so that will be July 20th. And we're going to do it the th- I think we decided the third Monday of every month up until October, and then we'll do them as needed. Like if we want to do more of them, we can do that too um, or whatever. So we hope that you guys will join us. We're going to set a timer and keep that at a pretty strict hour just because we don't need to have seven gazillion hours of content every week. Um <laughs> I would literally cry having to edit all that. We're also not going to do much editing. So, um, yeah, I hope everybody will join us from uh, – What did we decide 9.15 or 9.30? Whatever. Figure know. about this time. We we'll set the decide. timer for an hour and we'll be, we'll be all set. So we don't have any topics yet, but it, it, literally oh, hey, the everything, week is still young. <laughs> everything could change between now and Sunday or Monday or Monday at 8.59. So really – Things are in motion all yeah. the time. But it's the exciting part of living in 2020. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, as like a little like trial run, does anybody have anything that they want to, to talk about right now? Anybody want to unmute themselves and chit-chat? Uh, Ro, your birthday is on Sunday, right? Do you have any plans? Uh, hopefully did, beach. Did you quarantine for nice. the X? Hmm? Oh. Did you quarantine for the X? Oh, did I quarantine for the X? No, I did not. Maybe someday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, Elaine is not here, but Elena's birthday is actually on uh, Thursday, the 16th. So happy birthday wow. to Elena. So many uh, fellow crabs. Yes. Fellow cancers. I love it. So <laughs> I got it. It took me a second, but I got I got there. <laughs> yeah, I figured by the silence. I was like, I was like let me uh, clarify this. <laughs> so a funny, a little funny story about cancer the crab. My first day on the beach this year, I was sitting there and I turned to the left, and there was this little tiny crab crawling in and out of the sand, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And we Googled what type of a crab it was, and it was called an American ghost crab. And they're very rare, and it was the cutest thing I've ever seen. Are those the ones with the, the oh. like, the eyeballs? The eyeballs on top. Yes. And they're almost clear. And they they're look two characters. They're not usually seen on the Jersey Shore, and it was really far back in the sand. Like, it wasn't even near the shoreline, near the water, and it just kept coming in and going out of the little hole that it was making. And then every time I tried to get a picture, it would cover the sand over the hole. So I said, all right, well, it is time for the crab. I love that. (laughs) Not crabs. Nice. No, sing, sing. Not time for the crabs. Yep. No. Well, since I'm quarantining. Since, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your crabs are quarantining too. <laughs> yeah, keeping everybody. Nice. Um, not on the topic of crabs and also not really political, but I did want to say I finished watching uh, Little Fires Everywhere. Mm. Oh. And I, I know we're not talking about it tonight. But I my read opinion... half of it. Nice, Ooh, nice, nice. Yes. My goal you'll was to all a point of it. Where you but... can't stop. Yeah. No, you'll get to a point where you can't stop. I will say for the TV show, um, my opinion kind of changed after watching the whole thing. But I'm still, I'm, I'm really excited to talk about it. And I'm almost finished reading The Power, which Tasia sent me. And 
I think I read like a good 100 pages on vacation, which is impressive considering that we were just like mostly hiking and in a tent. Nice. Scott, as our resident, one of our resident TV experts, have you watched Little Fires Everywhere? <laughs> no, he's shaking no. his head. And he's laughing. He's like, I don't watch your chick shows. Um, <laughs> have you seen seen the blackout shades? <laughs> Matt, as our other resident TV expert, thoughts? Uh, I've seen the like I think six of them. Uh, I haven't gotten around to finishing it. Just kind of got uh, uh, other shows that kind of got my attention more and watched them instead. Uh, I, I did kind of like it, but it, I did end up liking the book a lot more. Yeah, book's still better, but I came around on certain things. Okay. Yeah, I haven't started yeah. it yet, the TV series, but maybe yeah. maybe I'll, I'll I'll do it this week in prep for our conversation. And Matt, like, you're so close because it's only eight episodes, right? Or seven. It's seven or eight episodes. Yeah, I got two episodes left. I just uh, haven't gotten to it yet. Okay. I'm playing for The me, Last of Us, so that's, that's kind of been my thing for the last few weeks. Yeah, for me, it was really like episode three where it was kind of like, like, maybe I won't finish this. But then I did. So <laughs> by episode six, it's, it's, I was committed. So does anybody out there have any moving back to a small discussion? Um, I think the biggest probably discussion right now going on is schools and schools returning. Does anybody have any thoughts on that? I know Roe probably does. I know Gott probably does because you have – both of your kids are in school, I'm assuming, right? <laughs> Anybody who doesn't have children in school have any persuasion? Tasia, uh, persuasion, have any opinion? Jesus, Colleen. Um, Tasia, do you have any thoughts? Oh, I, I have lots of thoughts and lots of opinions on the subject. Um, yeah, it, our two biggest school districts in California have just decided that they're – I got to take off the beard, sorry. Oh, I can break <laughs> again. Uh, I am that worked up. Um, but yeah, two of our biggest school districts, LA Unified and I want to say the Bay Area, they've decided to go virtual, and a lot of our districts still are debating about what they're going to do and still rooting for the hybrid model. And I think it just doesn't make sense until we have a vaccine. It's like I personally have not been in an enclosed area – for more than an hour, like to get my hair done once with a couple people, I can't imagine being back in the classroom right now. And like, mm-hmm. I know the kids aren't getting sick, but like what happens if we get sick or their yeah. parents? What, what then? What the fuck's yeah. going to happen then? Yeah. I just think it's too soon. It's way too soon right now to go back into the classroom. Uh, yeah. Do you think that the kids like, do you think that's going to cause like long-term harm for them? I know there's been so many things kicked around, like just pushing the school year back to January or um, what North Carolina is doing is a hybrid where they're breaking all the students into three groups, group A, B, and C, and it's like one week on and then that you're in the classroom with your teacher and then two weeks off where you're at home doing it virtually, which also, I don't know. I mean, I have so many mixed feelings about that. So when you say harm, do you mean harm as in, like, are they going to be set back or harm as in, like, they're socio-emotional? What are you... All. Everything. In, all, overall. Let's think about... I know there's always like, nuance. The classroom, though. Like, in the classroom, like, they're not going to be able to be, like, more than six feet next to each other. Like, yeah. they can't play with each other at recess. They can't, you know, get really close to each other and really ask each other, like, any kind of normal way. And at the same time, if you think about it just in terms of... Like, I know for us, for the hybrid model, they're expecting us to both be virtual and in-person teaching for those A-B groups, which I have no idea how the hell that's going to work in, like, actual functions, especially for mm-hmm. older teachers who are not, like, super tech savvy. I think it's just going to be I, – I understand the idea of wanting to have them in school. It's a clusterfuck, though, at this point. Well, and here's my thing is, like, if they're going to break them into three different groups to make the groups smaller, again, I think this is like an illustration. I mean, so many things about COVID are just showing like what was wrong with our society in the first place. But like, Mm -hmm. hmm, maybe class size should have been that small in the first place. Right. So that's thing A. Thing B, like if they're going to split them up into three groups, are they going to hire you know, three times as many teachers nope. to now, no, they're, you're going to have the same like understaffed school that's supposed to now provide classes to three different classes instead of one. Like, how does that work? 
Well, and then let's also talk about money, right? Let's look at fucking DeVoe, who is like, let's take some of that money from the relief fund and put it into private schools. Like, fuck the, like, you know, (laughs) poverty, like, level, like, public schools. Like, let's take care of the private schools. They're really hurting right now. Yeah. (laughs) She's the absolute worst. She's the fucking worst. No, she's the best. She's great. (laughs) Love her. Love knows everyone her in stuff. education loves her. Yeah. <laughs> really knows her stuff. She really, you know. You know, my portrait s- of her in my house. Yeah. My, my s- altar. <laughs> Prayed her every morning. Yeah, uh, my sister in law oh, is very non political, and we had Jay's family over to watch uh, Hamilton this weekend, and. You know, she actually pulled they, – they were talking about how the announcement for schools was supposed to come today and she's a teacher. And uh, she actually pulled up a clip of Betsy speaking and was like, get a load of this bitch. And Jay and I were like, oh, we know. Don't <laughs> – we're not new to this party like you are. <laughs> like we're not new to this game. <laughs> We've been here. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's just – it's just – I know it's got to be so frustrating. Uh, my mom teaches at a college and she teaches – she teaches students who who need like reading comprehension but like she was saying that it's it's really tough for her because she, she needs to have that in person like interaction so she can know what they're doing like she wanted to join twitter and i was like fuck no but she wanted to join twitter because she was like well i'm not there to have discussion with them and all of my eight o'clock classes nobody turns on the video so i'm just looking at blank screens and it's really frustrating because i don't know I don't know what, like, I can't have the discussions that lead to, like, okay, here's what we're going to read about this week and discuss because I'm not there with them and it's just hard to do it when you're not in person. And that's why she wanted to go on Twitter. And I was like, well, on the one hand, she'll be exposed to the Lincoln Project, but on the other hand, she'll also (laughs) seek me out. So I'm not really sure what to do about this. So... Moving over uh, to the chat, uh, Judy said, my university is doing hybrid. Only one third of the faculty are saying that they'll be in person and they are testing all students once a week. Oh, that's awesome. You guys have the resources to test students. What's, where yeah, do you live? Great. Are you in New York? I am. I'm in, up, I'm in upstate New York. So they're going to test 20,000 students once a week. That's awesome. Wow. That's, that's amazing. So there's a, they've got an efficient way to do it. It's um, pool testing. So they'll take a certain number of samples and test them oh, all. Oh, yes. Mm. And then if anybody pops, then they do individual tests. Indiv- yes. They were talking about this on Love It or Leave It. He had the a woman on who was discussing how that works. Okay, that's and awesome. apparently it's a front nasal swab instead of the mm. brain. Oh, that's good because – Oh, yeah. I believe I've told the story about when Jay had pneumonia and he threw up all over the nurse when they went to do the back nasal thing. Because it hit his – how? Because it just grossed him out or he was just going to throw up anyway? No, he gets the flu every year. He gets that up-the-nose test. But, like, right. for some reason, he was feeling yeah. so shitty and that so, nice. like – just, like, yeah. Like, they, they went all the way up there and he was like, Bleh. <laughs> I know. I'm laughing. Poor I saw guy. it. I wasn't grossed out, but <laughs> yeah. just... don't blame him. Yeah. It's, it's terrifying. Just the idea. Like <sighs> That was also when he was so sick that he um hallucinated my grandpa and his uh dead great grandma in the room. <laughs> like I was taking Zach up stairs wow. and he was like, Carl? you may want to come back because your grandpa's here. And I was like, <laughs> that's not a thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, why is your fever, honey? It's <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, anyway. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, and then a month later, I got pregnant with Alex because Jay was like, YOLO. And I was like, YOLO. <laughs> Um, not quite, but it's it's the shortcut story I like to tell. Um, <laughs> it, it makes everybody laugh. It sounds so much funnier. <laughs> Been a well thought out rational discussion about fertility no. <laughs> and family planning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, Scott said, I will always picture that now, so thanks for that. You're welcome. (laughs) 
Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, going back to the chat. Uh, oh, Rose says uh, yeah. New York City teachers will be in school all the time. So are you, you right, the, are the, the kids in, in the classroom too? Um, well, we're going to do very similar. We're going to have um, three groups to what you were talking about. So there'll be, we're actually technically going to have four groups. Um, we will have some students who are full-time remote. Okay. 100% of the time. And then we'll have three groups because, of course, in New York City, we've got between 25 and 30 kids in a class. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's and how it was so all island, too. Our, our formula is to have nine people in a room at a time, including the teacher. So okay, group, that's not too know, bad. When group A is home, I will have to remotely teach B and C. I don't know who's teaching the kids who are at home remotely for the entire school year. Um, I think I might have to do that too. And then, of course, I'll be teaching the kids who are in the room. And I can't teach group B and C the same thing because they won't be in the room on the same day. So I'm going to have to do a rotating schedule of all three. That sucks. And get this. This is even the best. This I just found out. This is between us and our little family here. But... Um, if your family decides that they want you to go to re- to go remote for the full 100% of the time, they can change their mind every quarter. You can so, do that here too. You can with the with the remote if you want to opt out of you know. You so if you want to start sending your kid to school, right? Yeah, you can send your kid to school, which is fine. Except that means that every two and a half months. I'm doing with seven-year-olds what happens in high school, basically. It's a new semester because I'm going to have all new groups and all new kids who are going to be in school on different days. And, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. But on top of all that, I mean, I'm concerned about everybody's health, including my Mm -hmm. own, but including Mm -hmm. that of the kids. But New York City is just going to go for it. Um, I don't think they're going to follow what's happening in California. So, you guys are in a much better situation than California. Right now, we are. We absolutely. are now. Yeah. Now, how fast right. that can change. But who knows what's going Florida gonna- knows how fast that can change. We were, we were in the best, one of the best situations in the country five weeks ago. Not so much today. Yeah. My county was down to one active case. Then the 4th of July happened. And oh, we're no. now up to nine with like people being added every day. Yeah, we just uh, reshut down everything here, which like, I mean, when when things were reopening, we were saying like, it's too soon. And surprise, surprise, it was too soon. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know. I know. It's it's just very frustrating. Yeah. yeah. I think so, <laughs> it's just like, so frustrating. Uh, this discussion, what I will say is our discussion, what's different about it is that we're actually asking teachers and that seems to be maybe like one of the missing uh, sources of input on the national level. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, right. I bring the people to the table who you know are there. Who actually know? <laughs> right, and who you're asking to be on the front line? Right. You know, military generals get to sit in on the strategy. Why not let teachers sit in on the battle they have to to face? Mm-hmm. Well, and also, like, I mean, to, comparing it to military personnel, like they they sign up to you know, they know full well that they're potentially going into harm's way. Like that is part of the job description. Um, Teachers jobs, their job is to teach students. It's not, you know, to go to those front lines where they didn't ask to be or get shot at or what have you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Like you're already under underpaid, overtaxed, and now you're going to throw on a bunch more work. It's like, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to compensate these teachers for all this extra work you're going to be expected to do, I bet. Yeah. I mean, teachers it's, were never, have never been right. really compensated in the first place. So. It's it's just, it's not, it's not right. It's not right. And it's not, I think this is another one of those cases, again, and I know we see it, we see it after, you know, like school shootings and stuff, where we don't prioritize our children in this country. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't have this, like... You know, there's there's not that like reverence of the fact that these are the people that these children are going to grow up into the adults that take over our country that like lead us in the world that are going to, you know, be the ones that d- 
develop the next vaccines or cure cancer or be the ones that like, you know, are are, you know, doing great things for for America. Like we're not willing to invest in our future when we don't invest in our children. And like we see it time and time again. And I think that there's a lot more outrage and a bigger discussion now because it's actually affecting everyone's children, not just, you know, like but it's, it's not- affecting some some people's children more than others. Of and course. So I think there's yeah. Um, definitely some people have more resources than others. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's like, it goes back to, I mean, just like the fact that we don't, it's like what you're saying. We don't invest in, in our future because we, we don't care about children. I mean, you know, somebody can come in and shoot 25 year olds and we're not going to change gun laws. So clearly we don't care about children as a country, but then also we just generally don't like respect or fund education public education does not get the funding that it needs. And that's what we're seeing right now. And the idea that private education would not only be funded, you know, by people like actually paying tuition uh, into it, but then also would somehow like get part of the federal funds. Like, I mean, that's just so ass backwards when you have these districts, like, it, I don't know. The, the way that public schools are funded are just, is just so fucked up because like it really should not depend on how rich your parents are, how many resources your school has. Like that just really sucks. Right. Well, it's like for me, it's like the sad thing is it's like not so much that we don't value education because yes, yes, we don't. But it's that we value the the politics of it more. You know, yeah. that it, it's more about winning, winning the argument, winning the fight. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's not about the consequences. It's about winning the war. Side note, I will definitely come back to that. But Dennis, the way that your background looks, it looks like you're chugging a giant solo cup yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it is a pretty amazing back. Uh, Isn't it? Is? <laughs> it's Mary Ellen in the picture. It is Mary Ellen, yeah. <laughs> is that Mary Ellen? <laughs> I was wondering if it was. Couldn't see with the solo cup in, in the way. <laughs> she's a hard partier. Hard we've, counseling. Yeah, we've always known that about her. She, you know, she's a real hard partier. Yeah. <laughs> she's a wild one. She is a wild one. She's always the Indeed. first one to do karaoke. Yep. Which everybody wear your fucking mask because I saw that we could take care of this shit in two months if we just all wore our masks and then everyone could come to Raleigh at the end of September. Um right. I know. Yeah. No, and speaking of masks, like I will say, even though, you know, like I love California and there's so many things that I appreciate it, but like once you go a little bit inland, uh, things get a little hairy. Um, I like, I, I consistently forget about how, how, like how inland California can be super hicky. Um, (laughs) when we were driving around and the national park was awesome, but some of the little towns around it, Mm-hmm. Frank was like, this is like worse than Montana, <laughs> mm-hmm. which I say with love because we both love Montana, but you know, Missoula is very different than certain mm-hmm. other parts of the state. Um, but yeah, that was interesting. And it was super wild to go to like, we went to a couple of like, sort of like uh, grocery store type places where like basically nobody was wearing masks. Like, did you guys not get the memo? It's like a statewide mandate, but whatever also just common sense and but okay all right yeah i know it's just i, just I wish understand. i wish that Freedom. we could have gotten everyone on board to wear their masks and instead of opening bars and restaurants <laughs> <Right>. prioritize opening <laughs> schools because like i don't know there should be there should be like a hierarchy of things and i was on another zoom call last week um, I think where, where was it? Was it here where I had mentioned? Um, I was like, why can't people just you know buy, drink beer at home like the rest of us are doing now? And uh, somebody was like, oh my god, it's so much cheaper. I'll never go back to a bar again. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <sighs> it really is, right? Like you can get a six pack well, for it's... like seven ninety nine in Raleigh, at least, and that's like the price of like one beer everywhere else, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, and it's like, and, and don't get me wrong, like I, 
I've been very excited to see our local restaurants open back up and I have I know, I know. gone and like dined outside and done the whole thing. So let me just preface it with that. But I think bars and restaurants are in a position where it is easier for them to pivot their bus- business model to stay open in a corona environment than it is for schools. So why we are asking the schools to take the burden of pivoting their model while we are letting the bars and restaurants proceed with like less of a leap, just, just seems so backwards to me. I know. Um, Judy said in the chat, unless you want to say it out loud now. Yeah. So I went to Trader Joe's. They had a big sign up that says mouth and nose must be covered, you know, due to state, you know, state order, because clearly saying wear a mask was not sufficient. And that was Trader Joe's. You know, not not the you know not the Mega Mart. It was Trader Joe's. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> I mean the number of people I've seen with their masks, like you know, covering their mouth but not their nose. It's just like, why? Like, if you got the mouth on your the mouth on your face, if you got the mask on your face, like why half ass it at that point? I just don't get there. it. You're almost there. You're almost so there. close. Like, uh, so I know. Close. Where it's like they have like your underwear. Liking your penis is hanging out, it. but it's yeah. like you wouldn't wear your underwear like this. <laughs> Why would you wear your mask like this? Oh, it's my favorite meme in the internet right now. Oh, I haven't me every seen time. it, but I love it already. Oh, it's so good. It's like a really like uh, <laughs> crude line drawing where so like the penis and the nose just are kind of gonzo shaped. You know, so sort of. <laughs> it's great. It's really good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I am sweating in this toga, by the way. I'm sweating. I'm trying um, not to move too much between the earrings and the toga. I'm like afraid of a wardrobe malfunction. Here. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I'm fine as long as I don't stand up. Yeah. Uh, JP said some of us can't tuck it all into our underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Randy, you're in Pennsylvania, right? Yeah, right. Right now, I am. Yeah, I kind of go back and forth between Maryland and Pennsylvania, but I'm in Pennsylvania. Okay, that's what I thought because I, I used to think you lived in Maryland, and then you mentioned Pennsylvania once, and I got very confused. So, okay, both that, places. Okay, <laughs> what is it like in Pennsylvania? Because I follow one of oh my, my favorite God. bloggers on Twitter, oh. and it sounds like it's fucking terrible. insane. I mean, no one is wearing masks in stores. I mean, even though even though it's required by the state, even though the signs are up in the grocery stores and everywhere, uh-huh. uh, no, most everyone ignores it, other than the people working in them because they oh have to. Oh my god! Um, and my well, I don't want to get into it too much, but just overnight last night, a lot of political election signs just sprung up on front people's lawns in my neighborhood. Um, I was not in a good mood, but what can you do? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I know. Now, Maryland is not like that. I was just in Maryland last week and uh, it was much different. I mean, it was um, people seem to be care more. So, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's my friends in Europe, like, just don't understand how wearing a mask could be politicized because you can have whatever politics you want, but like, uh, but yeah, everybody you're has kind of this... stupid if you don't. It's America, because... we can politicize anything. <laughs> but like Challenge everyone acceptance. has the same shared goal of like getting back to whatever the new normal is going to be. So like it shouldn't be political. Every to my family's credit, every single one of them wears their mask when they go out. Like and they even say, I was talking to my grandma yesterday morning or whatever time is like a blur. No, Sunday morning. And she was just like, Oh yeah, those people with their, you know, liberty not wearing masks, like they're so stupid. Like <laughs> it's like, thank you. You turn the Tucker Carlson job, off. Grandma. I'm so glad. Mm-hmm. Good job, uh, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? But like seriously, like it's just it's like the person that I got into the fight with on next door when he was like master political. And I was like, no, they're not political. <laughs> like they're really not like they are. No. If you want them yeah. to, to want it to be, but like, I guarantee you, I like, I'm related to so many people who are on the other side of the aisle as me. And every single one of them is wearing their mask. And 
not one person thinks it's a hoax. Not one person is not taking it seriously. Not one person, like, everybody is pretty, like, you know, even them, like, you know, they agree, like, shut the bars and restaurants down, get the kids back in school, like, we should be prior- prioritizing something. Um, but, like, yeah, I don't know, it's just, I guess it is what it is. But, like, it's very frustrating. Um, yeah. Um, uh, God, do you feel comfortable telling us, like, if there's crazy people that are at your mall that you guys have trouble with, or? Sure, um, <laughs> the reality is, in the mall, people have been incredibly compliant with masks. Good. Like, almost shockingly. The biggest problem we're having was with mall employees, you know, the people who work in the little carts and kiosks in the middle of the mall. Mm-hmm. They like to pull their masks down. And well, we have we have code compliance in the mall seven hours a day, so they're on it pretty. You know, Broward County is not messing around. Yeah. Um, the the big issues we've had have been closer to the beach in the restaurants because the restaurants have essentially de facto become bars. Interesting. So people, people just sit, sit down and drink and as opposed drink. to standing mm. in the bar and drinking. But yeah. so what they've done is they've shut down the restaurants now at 10 p.m. to stop that. Okay. Mm. It's, it's uh, yeah. It's a mess down here. I mean, I mean that's it. It and that's it, it's a cautionary tale for any other state. You know, I mean, I caution New York as they begin to open up. You know, we we felt like we had this thing by the horns eight weeks ago. And we don't. Yeah. And, you know, and it just, and it came out of nowhere. And, you know, it just accelerated like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was Seriously, you, though. But it was you guys and Arizona and Texas. And you guys, that seems to be the hot spots now. Like North Carolina is not doing great. But well, California. Like, well, oh, that's right. I, yeah, well, I consider like sense. California, like, you know, I never took them off my list. So. <laughs> We did have really good leadership, though. Um, I just think we opened too early, but also we have a ton of people. Um, I will say even like the maps that I saw today, like Montana was on the list now of like There's 37 increasing states. by like 50 percent. Um, uh, I was they thought that they were totally fine. And there's a lot of those people there that are probably not going to wear masks. But the, my friends in Montana, it's like life as usual. <laughs> Scott said, so right. two people to four people. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it, there was a time when it was like that, but no, they're like surging right now. But they, there was so much like, for example, even I, Yellowstone is like a zoo. I mean, it's always a zoo, but like they had a ton of pressure from the all of the local communities at the entrance points to reopen because it's very much like that part of that part of the world, like Montana, Wyoming and, and Idaho is very much like the... Um, you know, libertarian sort of mindset Mm. and economy and uh, probably thought it was a hoax too. And a lot of don't tread on me flags over there. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah. 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 And now their cases are surging. So I don't know. Matt, you're in Maine, right? New Hampshire, Maine. Got him the fucking worst. Rhode Island. Someplace that Trump was about to go to and he canceled. Maine. No, he's chewing. New Hampshire. Hold on, one he's word chewing. sounds like. Oh, I, th- I thought he was syllable. like your first, cho- your first guess. <laughs> it's a movie. Sorry, right, I just put popcorn in my mouth and you just <laughs> ask me any questions. Damn, I should have yeah. made popcorn. That's good. Ah, oh, such a good idea. Yeah, we got, Trump was supposed to come here uh, Saturday. Uh, so New Hampshire. In, yeah, New Hampshire. Yeah, in and you're uh, low, right? What was that? You're low, so like if you guys had an yeah. outbreak in two weeks, it would have been like very easily traceable. <laughs> yeah, like I work in the the, the town that uh, he was going to. It's like about a half hour drive from where I live right now. So it's like if there was there was probably going to be a big you know surge, but uh, you know he canceled because of the weather and the. Storm that were going to happen, and uh, you mean the TikTok yeah. twits, uh, the TikTok storm that was about to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it turned out it was just like it poured yeah. the night before, and aside from being humid and gray, it was just a pretty typical July, you know, day. It was just, yeah, you know, humid. 
Cloudy with a chance of TikTok. I had to say that because I want to make it the episode, episode title. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're doing okay right now. We have like 600 cases over the whole state. But, uh, you know, who knows at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we're kind of dispersed here. I mean, we're, but yeah, you almost don't want to tempt it, but. Yeah. Arts. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've, everybody stay safe and out there. Thank you for sharing all of your experiences. It's, you know, it's good to talk to people and see like their perspectives coming from other states and whatnot. You know, North Carolina remains, we're a purple state, so that reflects in our mask wearing. <laughs> like, I, I, <laughs> La- uh, two weeks ago, um, I ventured out to get a Manny Petty, and I was there right as they opened at 10 a.m. It was, I think, Wednesday morning. You know, it was it was pretty it was pretty empty, but like, and and they had like every other thing like spaced out. But the woman next to me and her technician who was doing like her pedicure, neither of them were wearing masks, and I was. I was the first one in there, so like you know, they, this started yeah. after I was already like mid petty, so I couldn't like get yeah. up and leave. And then another woman came in, and she was getting a manicure, and she wasn't wearing a mask. Her technician was though. Mine was, and I was. But like you know, I was very. I wanted to say something, but like I just was like, it's just, it's not worth it. Like I, whatever. They looked rough. We needed to get cut. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fair. I still haven't done any of those things. <laughs> but anyway, but I just was like, you know, I was very much. And mid pedicure, the woman who was getting it put it on, but her technician never put it on. And then I was like, damn it, this is like my favorite place in the area. And I was really disappointed because now I don't feel like I can go back there because they don't I, make I mean, it. How is it not it with I their just, workers. I just. It is. It. It's a statewide ordinance. You have to wear your mask, but like, but and they're just not if complying. There's, right. If there's no one there to police it. Jesus Christ. Um, Randy says that he got his hair cut for the first time in five months and they were pretty careful and he felt safe and everyone was wearing masks. Appointment only reduced people in shop. That's great. I will say right before, um, right before this podcast, I cut my own hair. Nice. Yes. It looks fabulous. Yeah, I am. I am very happy with it, and I was it like, "Looks great." Thank you. Well, it's, it's really impressed. It's not the front. The front is just the same. But when I got that terrible haircut back in February, when she like fucked up the back, like when it grew out, it like the back was like on my neck. It was like mm-hmm. it was kind of like mullet esque. It was really gross, and it was to a point that it was just horrible. So I cut. It I looks cut great. The back. Though. And I'm nice. very happy with it. I like it. Nice. And like that's it. why I was late. Oh, <laughs> that's why. It's a good excuse. Absolved. Good excuse. Yeah. Uh, Turns out chat, my scissors do not cut hair well. In yeah, the chat, Daniel hard. says, my friend in Washington State said that his local sheriff in uh, Washington would not be enforcing the state mandate there. Jeez. So, and I know. Like Everybody Washington in the chat is so shaking bad. Why, Like, Right. Did, did they learn nothing? Oh. Clearly. Anyway, um, moving on real quick, just to lighten the mood, I had found a bunch of dad jokes, and um, because JP is sitting there almost asleep, I decided to uh, tell them in his honor. Yes. This, I love these this. all go out to you, JP. Okay. What Can do sprinters? Guess the punchline. Sure. Okay. Mm. What do sprinters eat before a race? Fast getty. <laughs> Nothing. They fast. <laughs> uh, <that's close. laughs> I love dead great. jokes. Love them. Yeah, love, them love them. Uh, what concert cost just forty five cents? Nickelback. Close. Fifty cent featuring Nickelback. <laughs> uh, Get it, guys? It's a math joke. Yeah, it's math. It's good. It's this funny. is why the kids need to go back to school so they can understand this joke. <laughs> oh, uh, what do you call mac and cheese that gets all up in your face? Jalapeno business. <laughs> Spicy mac and cheese? Too close for comfort food. <laughs> <laughs> Why did the scarecrow win an award? 
I don't know. Because he was outstanding in the field. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear about the restaurant on the moon? Great food, no atmosphere. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Why do melons have weddings? Because they can't elope. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, why couldn't the bicycle stand up by itself? This one goes out to you, Amanda. Because it had an insufficient driver. <laughs> no, <laughs> because it was too tired. <laughs> I think I broke Scott <laughs> and Randy. <laughs> I like that one, though. That was funny. How many apples grow on a tree? All of them. Yes! What are you? Are you? Are you cheating now? No. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. Our 1978 call. They want that joke back. Oh. Good year. Oh. Uh, okay, <laughs> finishing up. Um, oh, keep going. <laughs> oh. <laughs> JP's like, I'm taking notes for whenever I can date again. Uh, did you hear about the guy who invented lightsabers? Life lightsabers. No. <laughs> Start again. Lightsabers or light sa- life savers? Did you hear about the guy who invented life savers? They say he made a mint. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, this one's dumb. Okay, this one's too dumb for me. Hold on. <laughs> hey, want to hear a joke about construction? I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Why did the invisible man turn down the job offer? He couldn't see himself doing it. <laughs> okay. I just love how much Colleen loves these. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel liked that one too. I could hear him laughing through the door. <laughs> yeah, that one was good. That was good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> to whoever stole my copy of Microsoft Office, I will find you. You have my word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I'm going to laugh so much when I'm editing this. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'm so good at sleeping, I can do it with my eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my uncle named his dogs Rolex and Timex. They're his watchdogs. <laughs> uh. Okay, Colleen. Yeah, we're done. I'm done. What do you What do you call a fish with no eyes? Blind. Fish. <laughs> 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 Oh, you're so good. Okay. Okay. Right, one more. One more. One more. How do you make a Kleenex dance? Put a little, little boogie in, in it. Yes! I know that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a classic. I've never heard it before, <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> what, did George, what did George Washington say to his men before crossing the Delaware? Get in the boat. <laughs> I don't know why that was funny. <laughs> I guess they were going to cross the river, so he said, get in the boat. Right. I know. I don't get why that's funny. Because it's a dad joke. Funny watching Kelly discover why it's funny. <laughs> well, because I was trying to think of Hamilton lyrics to answer you, and I couldn't think fast enough because there were just so many. Okay. Why do trees seem suspicious on sunny days? They just seem a little shady. A little shady. shady. <laughs> okay, fine. You guys, you guys have caught on to me. All right. Uh, uh, somebody had said in the chat tequila break, so let's do a tequila break, and then we'll do our commercial. <laughs> break. We'll take All our. Right. Uh, we'll, Ooh, we don't need to go into full-on commercial break. Full-on we'll margarita, do break I think. And, oh. oh, with a reusable straw, I dig. That's the one thing. In quarantine, I haven't been using my reusable straw. I don't have a reason for it. It's kind of a bummer. 
I um, like it. it. It's it's collapsible. It like folds out and then it folds back down. Yeah, everybody. Do any of your cocktails reason. necessitate a straw? No, not really. I don't really. Could you make a cocktail like around the idea of needing suppose, a straw? That's true. I suppose I I could. There's no reason why I couldn't use it at home. It's the novelty of being able to use it not at home. I everybody wear their masks so Amanda can take her reusable straw places and kids can go back to school. Um, <laughs> Good da- damn it! <laughs> Seriously, people. Uh, Daniel has a joke. Daniel, do you want to unmute yourself and do it, and then we'll take the shot. Oh, guys, this is the end of the Patron. This has got to be a very yes. special shot. Oh, I finished mine like this ages ago. Time. I still have this much fun. The Avion well, is where it's at, shots though. without you? Like... All right, we're going to have to break U.S. Postal Law again this year. Sorry, Dennis. Oh, oh, I got a little on the... I just um, tend to do baby shots. Okay. I also just uh, really love this little baby bottle. I'm sad to see him go. It is a really cute bottle. I love the stopper. Yeah, he's just like a little... little JP Ball. is wearing a Bob Ross mask, so that's happening. Well, All that's right. fun. Anybody who wants to join, this shot is to wearing your mask. Just do it. And July, July, gust. July birthdays. July, to my fellow yes, happy birthday, everybody yes, in July. Crabs. To my fellow crabs, may the month be not too emotional for you. To crabs. Have a good cry, it'll all be fine. <laughs> You, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but this has come completely undone as I've been sitting here and I just keep trying to tuck it in. It's so uh, hot. I finally figured my out. Oh, I had a, I had yeah, a little fix here with a rubber band. I'm um, impressed with you guys doing the one shoulder. I just could not figure it out. Uh, so Kayla said, episode title to crabs. We can do that. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. 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 All right. Like so we're going to take a quick commercial break and then uh, when we come back, we'll do uh, the feedback and then we'll we'll get out of here okay we are back um we had some fun silly times while we were um on our commercial break or whatever which i think is just a long way of me saying join us next time fun join us for the broad topics we could talk about things that aren't covid related even um, as long as they're like topical, I don't know what that would be, but like, here we are, <laughs> but yeah, uh, come join us. Ed, the creepy mailman has joined us, uh, since, since, um, our commercial break. And we're going to kick this off with a dad joke from Daniel. All right, here we go. Get ready for the joke. Yes. Why can't the nose be 12 inches long? Then it would be a foot. I think JP got it. Because then it would be a foot. <laughs> nice. I told that joke with other body parts. I could read <laughs> people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I'm gonna pee my pants. Stop. Nice. <laughs> Hope that was worth it. That was a long wait for that. I didn't realize they were gonna take a whole commercial break. <laughs> oh no! It's, it's called suspense building, my dear. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Amazing. Oh, so that was great. I loved it. If you have any more, please feel free to chime in. Please feel free to chime really? in. <laughs> JP, JP. All right, JP. What do you got? Like, well, Let me shut up for this one. Oh Jesus! Wait, wait. Ed is officially wearing his mail outfit. He's got his mail shirt on. Toga, toga, toga. I just—I thought you said togos. I got a sandwich that I brought home. <laughs> goes, Damn it! That works. Wait, togo? What's a togos? Is that a type of sandwich? <laughs> no, to go. T O G O. To go. Oh, to go. Oh, okay. So no like togos. A- it's like subways togos. Uh, okay. There is a picture of a naked Justin Trudeau on Dennis's screen. Oh, Amanda, no, you're just not into your like dad joke mode. <laughs> All right, let's let JP do his dad joke because we got some facey back. Yeah, to we get got to. some facey back to get to. My favorite joke: Two muffins are baking in an oven. One muffin turns to the other muffin and says, "Boy, it's really getting warm in here." <laughs> the other muffin turns to the first muffin and says, "Oh my God, a talking muffin!" <laughs> nice. I kind of I love like that it. one. <laughs> a joke about muffins. I did not know where that was going to go. 
It's true. Um, okay. Uh, we're going to move into, we're going to do the face back next week because it's about books and I'm really going to have that book finished next week. <laughs> so, let's move into the match. What she says. All right. That happened to me today and it was awesome. They were all different sizes. I couldn't get it out and take a picture. She takes them one at a time. Oh, I got it. Oh, her roommate does a bunch at once, like six. <laughs> <laughs> takes a minute to get going. Oh, sometimes it'd be that way. Yeah, yeah, that's the truth. truth. <laughs> that won't happen again for a while because, because of hashtag COVID. Uh, if it was a numbers thing, you would have been on it. True. We're going to do it on a different night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then we're done and everybody can go watch their HBO shows. <laughs> <laughs> we would love to have the maximum amount of participants. Still, you wouldn't, everybody? <laughs> Greg had it. Kayla had it. I am just hot as it is. <laughs> oh, they got approval to do it. Which is usually twice as many as you usually get. <laughs> if I can't do it in two more weeks. <laughs> oh, I like that they did that. <laughs> I'm going to go with the only thing good for large crowds. <laughs> do you want to take our break now and get our refills and then get into this? Or do you want to power through? <laughs> this next one is for Nick. <laughs> you have to build it up over time <laughs> every poll that comes out <laughs> we've done it we've done all the things <laughs> there is stuff down there that we don't know about it's true why isn't it stopping I hadn't worn pants in a really long time. <laughs> More things keep leaking every day. Who knows what's going to leak before this comes out? <laughs> oh, who knows what's going to leak before this comes out? Snaps gloves. Let's finish this up. <laughs> <laughs> we were barely at an hour when we started this. Someone else fill her in. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but I have to ask, because I do not remember, what was leaking? I don't know. Mm. Uh, I was like just talking weeks. about, like, stuff about Trump. You know, mm. Oh, leaking. the like, leakers. Uh, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. The the More things keep leaking that. every day, yep. Mm-hmm. Got it, got it. Amazing oh, how things can get twisted. It's very handy to mm. have you here while <laughs> to ask. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you. All right, moving on to uh, emails, feedback. Uh, Gail had a couple of book recommend. Oh, man. We <laughs> should save this for next week, too. All right, moving on. We have uh, an email from Des, and then I believe another email from Astrid after that. Um, so here we go. Hey, Amanda, Shandy, and Colleen. This is Des. Happy birth anniversary. Um, happy birthday, Amanda. Uh, haven't. Uh, sent in any feedback in like two months I've been behind on episodes I finally caught up, thank you for that week off Um, and so I wanted to call and give you an update about the shitty 2020 situation Uh, remember two months ago I told you we had adopted a kitten from the uh, um, animal shelter yeah, kitty had ringworm (laughs) so for those of you who are not really that familiar with ringworm, it is not a worm it is a fungal infection, like kind of like athlete's foot. It's highly contagious, and it is extremely itchy. Um, it's not a fun time. Everybody in the house got it. We were covered in ringworm. That sucked. It was like over a month before it was all gone. Um, we're finally better. I have... Uh, you can see where I had it, but it's it's basically going away. Um, so that sucked. Yeah. So be careful when you adopt an animal from the, the shelter that they don't have things like rainworm. The worst. Uh, anyways, 2020 suck my ass. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 2020 suck my ass. That's all I have to say. Um, 
uh, I know I had other things to talk about, things you've mentioned on the podcast, but by the time I actually get finished with the episodes, I can't remember everything. So, um, just, uh, you know, sit rep for me. That's all. Uh, love you guys. Love the show. Um, talk to you later. Bye. That sucks. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it does. That sucks. I'm sorry. Uh, the next, uh, the next voicemail is actually from Astrid who heard, uh, Des doing the feedback and wanted to leave some of her own. So prepare yourself for some cuteness. Our second youngest broad listener, as we know, with little Shemandeline, who just turned two, I think, two or three, right? Oh Shemandeline? Gosh. Oh, she just had her birthday last week. So happy birthday to her. Here we go. Hello, Mandy, Sandy, Colleen. Hi, everybody. Oh, Tell who you God. are. I'm Astrid. And did you want to say something to Amanda? Mm-hmm. Happy birthday. Yes. She found out I was doing feedback without her. She said she needed to do feedback. Is there anything you want to tell them? Yes. What do you want to tell them? Angry Birds is fun, but it's not my birthday yet. It's everybody else's birthday. It's everybody else's birthday? Your birthday is next month, right? How old yeah. are you going to be? Um, four. Four, Yes. All right. Anything else you want to talk about? Yes. What? Food. <laughs> Food. <laughs> you want to and talk Top about? Chef. Top. You like Top Chef? I like Top Chef. Yes, she likes Top Chef. That's breaking news. You heard it here first. All right. You want to tell them bye bye? Um, I want to t- food. Food. <laughs> yes. Food people. Food people. Okay. Well, let's uh, let them have some time for other people to do feedback, too, okay? I want you to talk. I already did my talking. Can you tell her bye-bye? Tell them bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'll hand it to Daddy. Daddy doesn't need to talk. He doesn't listen. Daddy, do you want to talk? Huh? Do you want to talk? <laughs> Daddy doesn't even listen to the show. Daddy doesn't know what's good, does he? Daddy, do you want to listen to this? <laughs> I listen to it whenever mommy has it on in the car, and it's awesome. <laughs> All right. Say, so, love you guys. Love the show. Bye. I love you guys in the show. Bye. Oh, Astrid, we love you, too. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Oh, that was so cute. Oh, that was, that was so sweet. I think we need a promo that just has Astrid being, I love you guys on the show. Yes. I love you guys on the show. <laughs> That was super adorable. <laughs> oh my god, what's the timestamp on that? I I can make that happen for us. <laughs> well, it's only a minute and a half long, so I think you can find it. It's towards the end. <laughs> it's so it's fair. cute. All right. Thank you guys. And Astrid, your birthday is I know your due date was August nineteenth. Please don't ask me how I knew that. I could tell you it's because it's our friend Julia's birthday. You That's were born. Good. I don't even know Julia's exact birthday. August third is that is that Astrid's birthday? I'm I'm terrible. I I'm good with numbers, but I for some reason I can't remember. Uh, anyway, we will sing you a happy birthday, Astrid, on your birthday. So no worries. Yes. Um. <laughs> yes. Yeah, super cute. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> that totally just made my night. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, Dennis said that was cute, oh, no. but did she leave us five star review? Good That's question. right. <laughs> anyway all right uh thank you guys so much uh for the feedback if anybody else wants to contribute feedback the broadcaster is three at gmail.com or you can give us a call um uh 331-276-2373 thanks to everybody that came out to celebrate crabs with us tonight we appreciate it we hope that you'll join us on monday the 20th for our first broad topics uh discussion and it'll be similar to what we did tonight but you know we'll you know, collectively pick a topic that is something that's on everybody's mind. Um, And, you know, we're aiming to do it once a month, but of course, if the need is, or if there's, you know, good feedback or whatever, we'll, we'll, you know, up that. But um, yeah. Thanks everybody for uh, joining us on Zoom. Thank you everybody so much for coming to hang out with us tonight. This was super fun. I, I had a good time. Hope you all did too. Thank you to the patrons. Um, we appreciate that. If you uh, want to become a patron, go to patreon.com slash J and Jack um, and uh, become a patron. Or you go to jandjack.com and click on the become a patron link at the top right-hand corner of the page. 
But thank you to the patrons that contribute to a certain level, and that would be uh, Attack from Tokyo, Eckhart Richter, Maggie the Magnificent, Joanne with a Plan, uh, Greg the Gray, and Ed the Creepy Mailman. Thank you guys. Ed, who is like, wow, that's my name right now. <laughs> But yeah, no, thanks everybody. Uh, we appreciate it. If you want to shop through the Amazon affiliates link, um, especially in this time, if you don't want to go to Whole Foods and risk not seeing somebody in their mask, you can go to, uh, you can go to Amazon because Amazon is like the same as Whole Foods now, right? Is that like a thing? Aren't they like a thing? That was, they are a thing. They are a thing. It is a thing. You're right. It is a thing. So there we go. It all ties back. <laughs> JaneJack.com slash Amazon, all the case letters. Um, I think that about does it for us. Does anybody else have anything? Anybody else? We truly appreciate you joining us tonight. And anybody listening out there that didn't join us, we hope you can join us in the future. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Um, wear your masks. Anybody else have anything? Don't be a mask hole. Don't be a mask hole. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little New England humor for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, on that note, thanks for playing, everybody. Um, my name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Chandy. And I'm so sorry, Hillary. Peace out, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> See ya. Bye.